I just take my roll of 3M and I just cut these squares. So this is only about a week and it is fully colonized. All right, had a shroom here with another video. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I prep my bins before I put in my substrate and my drain spawn. If you wanna know how to make Coco Choir substrate, check out the video, I'll leave a link at the end of this one. Um, I've already washed these tubs from my last grow and I do that with a 90-10 mix, which is 90% water and 10% bleach. I just put that in a spray bottle. I spray down all the inside of the tub and the lid and with a cloth wipe it all down, rinse it out. So now that they're dry from the 90-10 cleaning, I am going to use some 70% ISO. I typically just take a paper towel, pour some isopropyl on it, some isopropyl alcohol on it, and then just wipe down the hole inside of it. I do this in front of my flow hood to just minimize the um, airborne bacteria that might be flying around in here. Uh, and I give it a good wipe down on all sides, the bottom and everything. And then my lid. Once I'm done, I just put the lid on. Now that I've got it cleaned, I just take my roll of 3M, you can see the green, the green um, labeling on these rolls means micropore, which is what you want to use. So this is just a 3M micropore tape. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for all these things I'm using. But I basically just pull off and I just cut these squares and put them over top of my holes. Now some people like to do this after they've put their substrate in. Um, personally, I like to do this now. That way the inside is sealed up from bacteria sneaking in. So some people also like to just leave their bins from the time they put their substrate and their grain spawn in. They like to leave these ports open during the colonization process of the substrate. Personally, I don't like to do that. I like to try to retain as much moisture inside the tub as I can. So I will put some tape over top of my ports. Not completely, I leave a little bit exposed just so that there is a little bit of airflow through the bin, just not a fully opened hole. All right, and then the last step for prepping the bin would be a liner. Now, some people use them, some people don't. I've actually just finished doing a test. So in this tub, I did not use a liner. And I do have a little bit of side pinning going on here, but not much. It's just growing on the top. There's not even, there's not even anything going on underneath. So is a liner necessary? I'm not sure. Um, I might start doing away with them based on this test that I did. There are a few side pins starting to come out, but I don't think that's a horrible idea. Uh, for this test, I'm going to use liners, and then moving forward, I might not. The advantage to the liners is it helps to retain the moisture in the cake because the bag, the liner, will stick to the substrate as the substrate shrinks away from the container. And with the liner stuck to it, it helps to retain the moisture. With no liner, is as soon as the substrate starts shrinking away, the sides are all exposed to air, so it's going to dry out a little faster. If you are using a liner, uh, I use a 74 liter garbage bag because it's the perfect size. I cut all the way around.
And then I'll use one half of the garbage bag in each of my tubs. I just stick it in there. Yes, I know there are easier ways to do a liner for a bin, but these last round of garbage bags that I got ended up being very thin and very difficult to work with. The thicker ones you can wrap around the outside of the bin and tape them up around the outside of the bin and then take the liner and just drop it inside of your tub. And then I'll just use a few little pieces of green tape to tape up the sides to the container so that uh, no dirt goes behind there as I'm loading in my substrate and my green spawn. And after I've packed it all down, which I'll show you, I'll just trim off the top and that's it. Alright, so as you can see I've got some pieces of tape holding up my liner in place. I've got my tub of pasteurized Coco Core, Coco Choir, I'm not sure how you say it exactly. Um, I'm doing a test here, so I've got two different tubs. One of these tubs is going to get some substrate that is bulk Coco Choir. The other tub is going to get the standard Eco Earth bricks that you see most people growing mushrooms using. And we're gonna see if one is better than the other one, and so on. All right, so before I get started, I like to get my bags of grain prepped that I'm gonna be using by getting them all sanitized. Now, if you were following um, any of my other videos, I had some agar dishes where I had used alcohol to clean off the dish and it cleaned off some of the writing. So I wasn't really sure exactly what strain it was. So I had these two cups that I think are the same strain. I think they're Yeti, but I'm not positive. So this was done on June the 22nd. So this is only about a week and it has fully colonized these bags of uh, brown rice. Again, I, I gotta say the brown rice is by far the fastest colonizing grain you can use. Um, now I did these other two bags on the same day. So you can see that these ones are definitely slower to colonize than the other ones. Um, the only reason I would think is this is just a much faster strain, like so aggressive. But these are all supposed to be Yeti. So these are all supposed to be the same strain but yet to yeah anyways we're going to grow out these two mystery strains uh one in each tub as always we do want to you know try to be as sterile as possible to eliminate as much chance of contamination as possible especially when we're doing testing and experimenting Usually I am not really one to wear gloves or a mask or half the time I don't even use my flow hood. I just do it out in the open air. Um, but today because I want to make sure to eliminate any chance of risk to see which of these substrates is going to work better, um, we're going to use some protections. So if you want to get you know, get your gloves and hands all clean first. And then you want to give your bag a good wipe down. Now, even if I'm not using gloves or a mask, I still or the hood, flow hood, I would still use alcohol to clean my bags and jars before I turn them upside down over top of. Uh, sterile container of substrate, you know, I still use um, sterile techniques to a certain extent. Alright guys, so this is the bulk. First thing I'm noticing actually is it seems to have puffed up much larger than the brick does. And they definitely have the same weight. 
And we'll leave enough left. Put a little on the top. I'm not going to call what I'm going to put on the top a casing layer because a casing layer is more of a peat moss mix um, suited that the mycelium will not colonize it. It'll just colonize below it in the cocoa choir or whatever else you're using. And then the mushrooms just poke, poke through the surface. Um, a pseudo casing layer is just some more of whatever substrate you're using, like the cocoa choir, and and I just use that just to cover up uh, the top grains, basically, to help hold a little bit of extra moisture into the top grains while they're colonizing. Now, usually, I also cook my rice not fully cooked obviously but this last run I wasn't paying attention so I uh, it was fully cooked this is just like a solid brick um, you want to make sure you break up your mycelium to get as even distribution throughout the substrate as possible I can literally feel it just squishing. These grains aren't falling apart like usual. I'm actually smushing the hell out of it. So I don't know if there's a chance that's gonna release um, any kind of contaminants that may have been hiding inside the rice. Bacterias and contaminants that can hide inside the grains and burst grains can release those bacterias and contaminants and ruin an entire tub or bag. You want to really make sure you're pulling all the dirt out of the corners and mixing it with grain. Let all your edges, bottom edges and corners all have grain in there. Alright, once I've mixed it up, I even it out, make sure the corners are filled. And then you want to pack it down pretty good. I put a fair amount of weight down on it. You wanna make sure you're pushing down the edges and the corners. And you don't wanna have a lumpy, uneven top surface. You wanna to try to get it as flat as you can. Now we're just gonna even that out on top. That's how you load up a that's how you prep and load up a tub with substrate and grain spawn. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And uh, make sure to like and subscribe if you want to see the results of whether the bulk substrate or the brick substrate is better or has any differences. Uh, today's video was really just on getting a bin together and loaded and ready to grow. Um, so I'm going to just put this in a warm, dark place, maybe around 75 degrees or so. I'm going to leave it there for about a week. Just keep an eye on it and uh, look for the surface to start turning white and become fully colonized. Uh, you know, 80% colonization is about the time when you can induce pinning, which would just be uh, taking it out of the dark warm place, bringing it to light, removing tape on the holes if you put uh, masking tape over it to allow the air flow uh, to come through the bottom holes and out the top holes and that um, rising uh, of the air inside the tub is what evaporates the moisture off the surface of the mycelium which is the which is the defining point for the pinning to start. It's that evaporation of moisture off the mycelium, which is why you always see mushrooms popping out of grass in people's lawns uh, when the sun comes out after a rain in the middle of the day kind of thing. Anyways, uh, make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.